Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is going to be the video about the full moon in Capricorn. It's also going to include astrology from July 13th to the 31st of July. And I'm going to skip that astrology extra video that I usually do between the full and the new moons. And this full moon in Capricorn is going to be a super moon. Very exciting. <laughs> So the full moon will be happening at 21 degrees Capricorn, 20 minutes. Some people would say 21 minutes. I'm not going to quibble. On July 13th, uh, 2022 at 2.37 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. And you can Google for where or when rather the full moon will happen in your neck of the woods. So Capricorn is a female sign or feminine sign. It is Earth is the element for Capricorn. It is cardinal and it is ruled by Saturn. And at this point, I just have to um, let everybody know I'm filming this on July 4th. So there's a lot of noise outside because every single one of my neighbors are having parties right now. Okay, the full moon is time for a culmination of energy yin and yang energy. It forces you to deal with unresolved issues because it shines a light on the darkness and shows you what the unresolved issues really are. This is also a great time to let go of negative patterns and toxic thoughts and to release the wasted emotions, which are guilt, fear, jealousy, and disappointment. Now, what does it mean when somebody has their moon in Capricorn? Well, probably that person is very practical and pragmatic. They're grounded. They're very responsible. They will have a dry sense of humor. They'll set an example for others. They'll be very hard on themselves. They are perfectionists and they do have very high standards and they are loyal to a fault. Now, my mother had moon in Capricorn, so I absolutely love people who have moon in Capricorn. They're just so comforting to me. And I have my moon in Virgo, so I get along really well with people who have their moon in Capricorn. But when the moon is in Capricorn, we all tend to exhibit all of these characteristics. So as you know, I usually try to pick a person, a celebrity or a politician or somebody who has their moon in Capricorn so that you can kind of begin to visualize what it is that what it's like to have to know somebody who has their moon in Capricorn. And lately I've been finding people who are not only that moon sign, but they'll also be like, if it's a new moon, then they were born on a new moon, or if it's a full moon, they were born on a full moon, but with that moon sign. And I found somebody who was born on a full moon in Capricorn. And it is Leave Tyler. Now Leave Tyler Let's look at her chart here. She was born in 1977 on July 1st. So in 1977, the full moon in Capricorn was at the very beginning of the month rather than the middle of the month. But as you can see clearly from her chart, the sun is on one side of the chart and the moon is on the other in Capricorn. So she really typifies a full moon in Capricorn kind of person. You would not describe her as particularly boisterous, right? So even though she's born on a full moon, which is usually somebody who can be a little bit um, louder or a little bit more confident or really underconfident, they can go the other way too. But people who are born under a full moon very often feel like the flow is with them. They very often feel like they understand life because they, they have that yin and yang pull within their own character. So they understand it. And especially if they have the moon or the sun in a water sign, it helps them understand and just intuitively understand people. So this is Leave Tyler. She started out as a ballerina, actually, and this is shown in her chart by virtue of the fact that her midheaven is in the sign of Pisces. So not too surprising there. Now, her Mars is in Taurus, and notice that it is conjunct with Venus. So that's another connection to that midheaven because Pisces is very, very much drawn to the arts and to the feet, actually. Having her Venus in Taurus means that she would be drawn to the heart arts. Having her Mars in Taurus means that she would put her body 
into something that expressed the arts like dance. And I can't think of anything more grueling than ballet to do except for maybe sports. And she's got her moon in Capricorn. So obviously she's very um, hardworking and diligent and determined when she puts her mind to it. And this moon in Capricorn is trining this Mars and Venus in Taurus. So she would put, it would be very easy for her to commit herself to that very, very difficult life. And when she suffered an injury that caused her to give up dance, she turned to modeling, which in turn led her to acting. And I can see that she would be a good actress. Mercury and the sun here at the very end of her 12th house pretty much conjunct her ascendant, gives her the ability to understand behind the scenes what makes people tick. And also it's in the sign of cancer, which is a very intuitive sign. Now, her moon in Capricorn would see the financial prospects of going into a very highly visible career like acting. And I'm sure when she started out, she did not have her sights set on something as stupendous or galactic as what she ended up with because she has been just a phenomenally successful actress. Um, if you recall, she's, she did at least two of the Lord of the Ring movies that I'm aware of. She did a whole bunch of other movies that really put her name out there as really box office gold. Anyway, so that's Liv Tyler, and she is our person of um, one of our two people of the month who typify the moon phase that we are looking at, which is the full moon in Capricorn. Now let's look at the actual full moon that's going to be happening on July 13th. And the first thing that really hits me, if we just go back to Leaves um, chart for just a minute, you can notice that there are some planets almost all the way around the circle, right? There's a few houses that are empty, but pretty much you have things spread out. When we go to our uh, full moon, you notice we have literally 180 degrees of the circle is empty. And that's even with including the asteroids. So we're we're really looking here at um, some uh, a full moon that's really going to be focused on a narrow uh, slice of life. I mean, it's not pinpoint narrow, but it's just ignoring all the rest of these areas of life. Now, don't worry about the rising sign for this chart. It's really not going to matter for most of you who are for all of you who are watching. What really matters is that the planets are only spread out across 180 degrees. So except for this little asteroid series, all of our planets fall between the degrees of the sun and the moon, which is in this year, it's not that unusual, but in general, that is unusual. All right, moving on. So the first thing that I want to bring to your attention is Eris and Aries squaring Pluto in Capricorn and the uh, connection with Mars. That is the first thing that I want to point out. Eris, if you recall from previous videos, is the sister to Mars. So Eris is the female warrior energy. Mars is the male warrior energy. And they are both at about 90 degree angle to Pluto in Capricorn. So they are both triggering that Pluto in Capricorn. In addition, the day before the full moon, Pluto will return to its natal position of Pluto in the U.S. chart. This is very important. We've been experiencing Pluto touching on that degree for about the last four, three, four years. And in the last year to 18 months, it's been doing it a little more frequently. This impact on the U.S. is to have Pluto point out the weaknesses in our government because Capricorn is the government. Pluto points out weaknesses and it offers a sacrifice or it takes a sacrifice in order to cure whatever Pluto finds is lacking. So Pluto can also destroy its transformation, its destruction. It's also rebirth. So while I don't think the United States is going to come to a crashing halt, I do think that there is going to be tremendous upheaval and a transformation of probably our constitution and a good majority, a good chunk of our laws are going to be rewritten 
or thrown out and have new laws put in their place because the country is over 200 years old. So it's time. It's time to bring things up to date in this country. And many countries who face their Pluto returns have really dire consequences and they're forced to do this. So it isn't just something that I'm saying, oh, it would be nice to do and we should do it. I'm saying it's going to happen. Now, uh, if you really want to know more information about the U.S. Pluto natal return, please see my video about that, which is in one of my playlists about the planets. And also I am going to be mentioning Saturn and Uranus shortly. And I also have a series about the Saturn Uranus uh, squares and conjunctions. So this full moon happens to be a super moon. This moon is going to be really, really close to the earth. So it's going to be really, really big. It's going to look huge. But even more than that, it falls within 26 minutes of the last Saturn-Pluto conjunction that we experienced in 2020, which was just before the pandemic, the lockdowns, all that stuff. So the last time we actually had this um, Saturn-Pluto conjunction in Capricorn, as I said in my, um, in my videos, was the Protestant Reformation. So we've had Saturn-Pluto conjunctions, but not in the sign of Capricorn. And in 2020, when we had this conjunction, um, this was the announcement of the pandemic, but also um, fallout from a lot of things that had been happening in the country. So I think this um, conjunction actually foreshadowed the January 6th insurrection the following year. In addition, Pluto, this Pluto that is so, so important, is conjunct the moon, in case you missed that fact. Now, the moon is emotions, and Pluto tends to wildly exaggerate things, take things to the, to the furthest extreme possible. So this moon, it's a super moon already, plus you throw in Pluto, we're going to have a lot of uh, lunatics running around, basically. This full moon also trines Uranus, and Uranus has been a big player in our astrology for the last couple of years. It's really coming into focus as to how Uranus is affecting our agriculture, our food, the way we farm, the way we uh, harvest food, the way we store it, the way we process it, the way we use it, the way we prepare it for eating the kinds of foods that we prepare and we grow. So Uranus in Taurus, and that's all because Uranus is in Taurus, and Taurus is the sign that literally rules the earth. And so that moon trine there means that there's going to be an affect of this super full moon that really, really impacts the public. So this could be some kind of brilliant announcement about how to clean up our food industry, or it could be some announcement about a fatal, you know, disease that came from our food industry. It just depends. The way the big outer planets look at things, they don't see uh, smooth sailing as necessarily positive. They see under, you know, uncovering problems as positive, like Pluto unearths corruption and weakness, and it sees that as a positive. Uranus shakes things up, uh, challenges the status quo. So even though it's a trine with the moon, the moon represents the people, the public, and Uranus represents shaking things up and chaos. So even though it's a trine, which is supposed to be harmonious energy, it could be harmonious energy that's pointed at disrupting something for our benefit. And then we have... Venus square Neptune. We're going to talk about that in more detail a little bit later. Venus is also trying Saturn. That doesn't strike me as it's going to be a really big deal. It's just going to make things a little easier for all the Saturn events. And then we also have the Sun conjunct series. This is again involving our food systems, Ceres being the, the ruler of grain. And also 
eating, feeding people, nurturing people, things like that. And all of that is going to be training Neptune. So there may be some, you know, higgity biggity stuff going on there, but then it's sextile the, that moon in Pluto. So we'll be talking about that in a minute. And then we have Mars, which is actually approaching Uranus and the North Node. So this is all very, very interesting and exciting. And let's get into it. So this is what this full moon really means for the country. So as I mentioned before, Eris in the sign of Aries is squaring Pluto in Capricorn. Eris being the female warrior, the sister to Mars. And she's putting pressure on that Pluto in Capricorn. And that Pluto in Capricorn is meeting its own natal placement at the same time. Now, Mars is also squaring Pluto, but Mars and Eris are 10 degrees away from each other. So they themselves are not conjunct, which is probably a good thing. But the square to Pluto, nevertheless, puts a lot of pressure on, on Pluto. And this, having both of these warriors pressuring Pluto means that we are going to have power battles. There are going to be lots of different factions that believe that right makes right. Um, we may see um, uh, scuffles between the state and individuals. So anybody who has planets in the 25 to 28 degree area of any of the cardinal signs is going to feel this with intensity in their lives. And as I mentioned before, uh, on July 12th, Pluto will conjunct its own placement in the U.S. natal chart. This is the second exact conjunction of three that we are having this year. We had the first one in February. The third one will be in December. So this means that we're right in the middle of all of this Pluto energy. And this, uh, our Pluto is in our second house in the U.S. chart which affects money or banking, the economy, the GDP, also politics and our values. How do we redefine ourselves in this revolution? And then we could look at um, uh, issues like if we are rewriting the constitution, which would reflect our values and how we feel about ourselves, then what will happen to the country itself with Pluto sort of tearing down all of the um, dogma and structures that don't work anymore, what will that mean for the United States? Will states try to secede if they don't want to go along with the new changes to the Constitution and the laws? Or will the country remain intact? These are questions that definitely will be coming to the fore over the next six to eight months. And they will probably be resolved in 2024, not 2023, because in 2024, Pluto will be firmly in the next sign. It'll be in Aquarius. But be between now and then, it's in this retrograde motion where it's moving back over degrees that it already visited. And then it's going to station, uh, station direct and move through those degrees again on its way to the final conjunction in December. Now, even when it meet, meets the final conjunction in December, it's still going to be at, um, you know, in the 20 degree-ish uh, range of Capricorn. It still has to move through the rest of the degrees of Capricorn in 2023. Pluto moves very, very slow. And about mid-2024, it is firmly in the sign of, Cap of Aquarius. So... This super full moon, as I mentioned before, uh, at 21, 21 Capricorn is within 26 degrees of the Saturn Pluto conjunction. And I just can't emphasize how important this really is. Now, this is different than the Pluto conjunction to its natal placement. The Saturn Pluto conjunction is at 21 degrees of Capricorn. And um, this is just so important. This full moon and Pluto, which is conjunct the moon, will shine a very bright light on the same issues that were highlighted when Pluto and Saturn were conjunct in January 2020. Now, if you recall, in January 2020, that was right before we learned about the pandemic for real and the government started to exert control. 
We had lockdowns finally by March. We had a lot of government control. We had a lot of shortages. Remember, nobody could get masks or toilet paper. Everybody went crazy with paper products. Everybody thought that they were going to die. So they got, you know, all the diapers and, and toilet paper they possibly could. But another reason that people had a hard time with this is because we we had never been exposed to this in our lifetimes. You know, the people who remembered shortages in the Second World War most of them are very, very elderly or have already passed on. So we don't really have a, a generation of people who can remember rationing and things like that. I remember gas rationing in the 70s, but this was a whole new level of almost rationing and, and lockdowns and shortages. So on the night of the full moon or on the day, actually it happens in the afternoon. So on the day and the evening of the full moon, the moon will be gigantic. It'll be huge and very, very bright. And symbolically, this is going to emphasize its connection with the 2020 conjunction. So it may, may remind people of that period. And also it may tie the current controls in the government to what was going on at that time. Now, every full moon is very emotional. But when you couple it with Pluto, which is extreme or intensity, you're going to have a super huge response by the people at the time of this full moon to the government, which is represented by Capricorn. So any control that the government is trying to impose on people is going to elicit a really probably negative response, but maybe not <laughs> just a wild guess that it's going to be a negative response. And so will this be a repeat of what we saw in 2020, that people will just be outraged by this? Or will we turn it around and show our own ingenuity? Or will it herald the end of, of government control? So Pluto, when it exposes these things, also requires a sacrifice. So something is going to have to be sacrificed. Will it be a politician? Will it be people? I mean, in the in the gun control issue, you've had many sacrifices, people who have you know lost their lives due to gun violence. But when it comes to say the um uh women's reproductive rights or um, health care in general or voting rights or same-sex marriage rights. I mean, who's to say what the sacrifice will be? But trust me, there will be sacrifices. There will be mo many, many sacrifices. There's just too much planetary involvement with this particular full moon and too much repeat of these recurring themes and the degrees that other big astrological aspects have hit previously for it to go unnoticed. It's not going to slide under the radar. By the end of July, astrology will have moved into a formation that is very, very much like that that we saw at the beginning of the civil war in this country. And I've done videos about Saturn Uranus cycles and also about the US Pluto return. And the area of the world that's going to be impacted the most by this is Africa, India, China, Russia, Eastern Mexico, the central band of Canada and the U.S. Now, some of these areas may come into the news because of extreme Earth events due to, due to the proximity of the moon to our planet because the moon's very, very close. And the fact that the astrology is also indicating much more sun flare activity also affects the geography here. Now, the moon influences our tides, which, by extension, will influence our tectonic plates. So when you couple extreme tides with sun flares, you're going you're gonna to move things under the surface of the earth, the tectonic plates. And this is going to cause big, large earth events, earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunami, and, and extreme weather. It can also be expressed as political and financial volatility on a geo-global scale. And so all those areas of the world that I just mentioned could also uh, experience that. You could have extreme volatility of their stock markets, of their economies, of, you know, who knows, just all sorts of stuff. Now, it's not all negative and dire. There's a very beneficial trine between the full moon at 21 Capricorn, and Uranus at 18 degrees of Taurus. 
Now the moon, as I've said before, represents the people, the public. And Uranus represents freedom, new ideas, new systems. So uh, and Tor Capricorn is the government and Taurus is the earth. This could indi indicate people insisting on new freedoms and new systems to codify these freedoms. Also, the way we grow food and food production could be influenced. The human body could be in the news, um, maybe for new healing systems for the body and maybe new disco newly discovered diseases or illnesses. But Uranus would indicate that uh, these healing systems would work with the electrical and meridian systems of the body, which I've actually already heard about in the news, but they may be highlighted more, more at this time. There is also a square between Neptune at 25 degrees Pisces and Venus at 25 degrees Gemini. This is a very powerful time for creativity and aesthetics, which would bring about beautiful words, beautiful art, or slippery words, deceptive words, deceptive art. Neptune is also trying to the sun, which is conjunct the asteroid Ceres, Ceres at being at 25 degrees of Cancer. Now Ceres represents the harvest it represents grains it it it, it is um, a motherly energy emotional nurturing feeding people or feeding the world because you have the sun involved so this may bring about an impetus to have more spiritual meaning in our food and by that i mean that you can have more and more more people that decide at this time that um food and the way we handle food in the world needs to be more mindful in other words more people will turn to veganism or some form of vegetarianism as the world's vibration collectively rises we're seeing that people have a more spiritual relationship with our food even mindfulness which is gaining almost mainstream acceptance promotes a spiritual attitude towards everyday tasks such as walking eating studying etc. Ceres representing food and Neptune representing spirituality and the sun indicating the whole world could bring a spotlight on the idea that in order to survive, we need to embrace a more spiritual attitude about our lives and express gratitude about that which we take for granted at present, like our food. There is another asteroid, Haumea, which is in trine to the sun and Ceres, um, trining Neptune and sextiling the moon and Pluto. Now, Haumea is an asteroid. It's shaped like an egg, and it is named for the Hawaiian goddess who can birth children from any part of her body. So think cells reproducing in the growth process. This is producing miraculous technologies for growing food. This, this aspect is indicating that we could produce miraculous technologies for growing food. It would impact the food industry, the distribution uh, industry, regenerating the land, and even how we prepare food. So, so while Pluto is contributing to the demolition of our governmental systems, Haumea at the other end of the spectrum is bringing about astounding creation. All of this is juxtaposed by Uranus in Taurus, which is the new Uranus Earth, Taurus, so the new Earth. And I, I just have to say, it's an amazing time to be on this planet. Also on July 13th, the day of the full moon, Mars is moving towards Uranus and the North Node and will arrive actually there even before the end of July, but will certainly have its biggest effect in the last week or so of July. Now, Uranus is at 18 degrees by degree. And when we have this rare triple conjunction, it will fall on the same degree as the final Saturn-Uranus square in October. So... Again, I've done a video on this, the Saturn-Uranus squares and, and their whole cycle and what that means. Um, very, very important for our country. Saturn and Uranus usually do indicate times of peace and war in our country. So it's very important to look at their cycle. Neptune is usually involved in wars 
which is weird because Neptune is spirituality, but wars usually are a spiritual crisis. They're a time when people are coming to spiritual crisis and they don't know how to resolve it, so they fight. Anyway, this there's this is a rare triple conjunction, Uranus, North Node, and Mars. And it does not happen all the time, and it certainly doesn't always happen in these signs. But it's going to give us a preview of what will be happening in October when we have that Saturn-Uranus square. So pay attention to the end of the month of July uh, because it's going to give you a little heads up about October. Now, October is going to be a massive month astrologically. It's really going to be incredible. There will be eruptive, rebellious, revolutionary energy, which typifies this kind of conjunction. Freedom from Uranus will be energized from Mars and will tap into our sense of destiny, which is the North Node. Now, both Uranus and Mars are fast-moving energies, so there will be a sense of urgency to all of this. And while this triple conjunction will be shaking up our planet, Uranus, which is unstable and chaotic, will be shaken up by Mars. So Uranus can be lightning bolts shaking us up, producing earthquakes. And also at this time, just let me throw more timber on the fire. Uh, the Earth is passing through the photon belt. So light and energy is coming into our atmosphere. And this is bringing new energy literally to our bodies, to every cell in our body. We are getting new information from the photon belt. So just a crazy time for us. This is an incredible time. Now, Uranus and Taurus in general shakes up our security anytime it's triggered by Mars. And people have been ha going through this for the last five, six, seven years with Uranus. So here you will be triggered, especially wherever you have planets around the 18 degree mark of the fixed signs, not of the Earth signs, of the fixed signs. So look in your chart to see where you have 18 degrees of Taurus, and that's where things are going to be shaken up as far as your security goes. Lucky me, that's my fourth house ruling my actual home. So keep your fingers crossed for me. Now, between the full moon and the end of July, we'll see some major revelations. Major truths are going to be coming out that will be extremely shocking. But this will produce an awakening and will point us towards the future. Now, wherever Uranus is in your chart, this is where you will be waking up. So this is a peak time frame where other planets are stimulating much more activity in this area of your chart. So again, look for 18 degrees of Taurus to get a clue about what will be happening for you. This energy will also make it hard for some of you to sleep. So you may find that people are really on edge, uh, either because of sleep deprivation or because the energy is just so hot, so volatile. But this is a time in your life, if you haven't already done so, to learn some practices that can keep you calm. Learn how to go within and listen to your higher self, your inner voice, your guides and angels, and realize what your future can be and what you can do to help serve the rest of humanity. Meditation, prayer, contemplation, these are all practical, passive activities which will help you stay centered and grounded. And as we go through this is an enormously disruptive process, it's going to be very, very useful to be able to call upon and use these tools to calm yourself down. You also want to keep your vibration high. So you want to learn tools that will allow you to do that, like breathing exercises or visualization. You need to stay high vibe, even when you're dealing with very difficult 3D realities like bad traffic or difficult co-workers or family members who are really annoying. You want to stay in that high vibe lane and then you will be fine. All right, so that's what I have to say about the astrology of the full super moon in Capricorn on July 13th and all the um, accompanying planets and aspects that go along with that. And this is also covering 
the astrology between the full moon and the end of the month. So I will not be doing a second video about that. I will put the predictions for the full moon in a separate video because this one is already getting a little bit long. And with that, I'm going to say thank you very much. And I will see you next time.